realistically, how fast can you get on guitar? How fast can you get on the bass? How fast can you get with any instrument? This is something that I kind of had a conversation with uh, one of my students recently, and it also reminded me of another question that came up. It was like, how long does it take to get really good at guitar? And it's a, it's a fairly common question. And something, for those of you who don't know, I'm very much into weight training. Currently, I'm doing regular weight training uh, along with some body weight training stuff. And along with that, this I've been doing quite a bit of research, uh, watching videos, reading articles and whatnot to improve my training. And one goal I used to have was I wanted to be as big as Arnold. Uh, if you watch the movie Commando and how big he is in that, I mean, just like the, the whole thing where he's running down the beach with like he's carrying a log over his shoulder or something like that. I don't remember. Uh, but just that was like, that's what I want to do. Or that's how, how big I want to get. Like that looks basically perfect to me. It's like that's not too big, definitely not scrawny. Like, I want that. But I have since learned that I will never get that big unless I start taking performance enhancing drugs, basically steroids. And I don't want to go down that route. So things that I have learned about having a more realistic perspective when it comes to my training and how big I can get and how strong I can possibly get if, because I choose not to take the performance enhancing drugs, I will never be as big as Arnold. I will never be as strong as some of the strongest guys out there because I choose not to go down that road. Also, I have a very small skeletal frame. I'm not going to get huge. So when this it does, it does tie into playing guitar ridiculously fast and whatnot. And so unfortunately, I do believe there is some kind of genetic component to how well you can play your instrument and how quickly you're going to pick things up. So you may have seen some of these child prodigies online and you know people like 10 years old are playing like they've been doing this for you know decades and decades. Some people are just born with this ability to just be extremely good right out the gate. Uh, I guarantee you they still had to put in effort. They absolutely did. I've had some people say that I was gifted when it came to picking up the instrument quickly. But, I, you know, I question how much is genetic for me because I still put in quite a bit of work, uh, especially in the early years. You know, when I, I say for like the first three years, I was definitely putting anywhere from, you know, one to eight hours a day of uh, practice. During summer vacation, I was putting in every day like 48 hours. 48 hours every day during my summer vacation. I started playing uh, the, the summer before high school started. So once school did start, I was practicing on school days, I'd say an average of one to four hours, and then on the weekends still going back to like maybe four to eight hours. So, I mean, I loved playing. I played the shit out of that guitar. Lots of metronome practice, tons of metronome practice, uh, easily several hours worth of metronome a week. And that's what I attribute my speed to. I put in a shitload of effort into being able to play fast. I mean, I really worked my ass off at it. And I know that other guys, you know, guys like Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, uh, Malmsteen, Rusty Cooley, you know, these guys absolutely work their ass off to get as fast as they have. So now I'm ready to kind of drive the whole point home after I've talked your ear off for these several minutes. When you start comparing yourself to guys that have been able to get paid to play or practice with a metronome several hours a day, like Paul Gilbert, at least my guitar teacher told me, that's what Paul Gilbert did when he was in Racer X. He got paid to practice with his metronome like eight hours a day in order to maintain that kind of speed and dexterity and all that stuff. Don't know if it's true, but it makes sense. It's believable to me. Uh, I mean, Paul Gilbert's a freaking beast. He's 
that some of the shit he can do is just absolutely insane. But also the fact that his fingers are like this damn long certainly helps. Uh, so basically, when you start comparing yourself to these top shred guys, these guys who can do all these crazy-ass acrobatics on guitar, just remember, you're basically comparing yourself to top-level athletes of the world. You know, like people who want to play sports, or people who want to get into bodybuilding, powerlifting, and things like that. That's, that's something I did. I compared myself to the top-level athletes of the world who were taking massive amounts of performance-enhancing drugs, no, I don't think guitar players are taking performance-enhancing drugs, although I know there is one thing out there that helps you relax your mind and it kind of gets rid of your you know, pre-stage jitters or performance anxiety. I don't remember what the name of it is, but anyway, obviously it's a little bit different, but you know, that whole genetic component that I mentioned, like there is something to be said for it when it comes to that. Also... And I do have a fairly hard time saying something like that because I've always been a believer, like, look, yes, if you put in the right amount of effort for you, if you put in the right amount of correct practice, then you can really go as far as you want with these things. But having taught for so many years, I can, I can absolutely say without a doubt there are some people that just get it way easier than others. Some people just, they pick it up real quick. My dad is a guitar player, and his dad is a guitar player. So maybe that's something I have on my side, you know, because, you know, things get passed down generation to generation, I believe. Uh, anyway, so getting down to it, look, you, you, there are some things that you've got to take into consideration, your own limitations or your own capabilities and you have to work within that instead of comparing yourself to guys that are way better than you i invite you to compare yourself only to yourself and see you know even if like speed is the name of your goal a one beat per minute increase per day or even per week is still an increase celebrating small victories like that i think are very very important so what i'd like to wrap this video up with is uh, showing some numbers and giving you an even more realistic idea of what you can expect from yourself. And what is it? Is that uh, that rule or the idea that apparently was supposedly debunked recently of like 10,000 hours at any given activity you'll become an expert at or something like that. Let's just assume that's true. Let's assume that's the right number. So... We have 10,000 hours you're supposed to put into your instrument before you can play like an expert. So let's say you're going to do 30 minutes per day. That's about the, as much time as you can devote to practice, whether it's metronome work, whether it's working on chord scales, playing songs, doesn't matter. We're just talking about playing your instrument. That's what I'm really looking for here. So if you did 30 minutes every day, every day, seven days a week, the entire year, all 52 weeks, all 365 days, you're going to get about 182 hours a year, which is going to take you 55 years to hit this 10,000 hour mark. 55 years. That was a long time. So I hope that number helps a lot of you watching this video understand that it's not about how many years you've played. It's about how many hours you've put in with that instrument. A lot of guys say, oh, I've been playing 10 years. I can only do this, this, and that. It's like, yeah, well, how many hours have you putting into this thing? It's like, oh, well, you know, just kind of here and there, off and on kind of thing. It's like, well, no wonder. 10 years, well, I'll just be frank with it. 10 years doesn't mean shit if you haven't put in several hours throughout the whole thing. If you're doing like 10 minutes a day, it doesn't mean anything. You're not going to get anywhere with that kind of crap. And you're not. You just won't. That's, that's just... The, the truth right there. You will not. If you really want to be a badass at your instrument, you have to put in some serious hours. Um, just uh, an example, I had one student who said he wants to be as good as Buckethead, and he was putting in 20 minutes of practice three days a week. 20 minutes of practice three days a week? Buckethead is absolutely an expert. He's my favorite guitar player right now. 
far as solo uh, guitar playing stuff. Absolutely love what he does. His technique, I think, is just spot on. But beyond technique wise, it, what he writes and composes is just amazing. So, with 30 minutes every day, every day, it's still gonna, it's 55 years. So, if you're gonna be practicing 20 minutes three days a week, dude, you're looking at well over 100 years until you can be considered an expert. So, uh, let's look at another figure. The amount of time I advise all new players to put in every day, try and play at least an hour a day. Especially when you're new, you gotta, you really gotta start devoting some serious time to truly make progress. You know, what, if you've been playing for 10 years, you know, you don't have to play an hour a day to maintain what you have, as long as you put in the, the proper amount of work and the correct amount of work in the beginning. But, let's just go with this 60 minutes every day, an hour every day. You got 365 days a year, so you got 365 hours in a year. That will take you about 27 and a half years to hit the 10,000 hour mark. Now, that definitely reduces the time quite a bit. But, as you can see, even just an hour a day, every day, it's going to take a bit of time. This is a big chunk of your life that is going to be required to become an expert at playing. Uh, but even still, you know, 60 minutes every day, like if you're truly passionate about playing and you love music and you have a ton of fun playing, you're, you're probably going to be putting more time into the 60 minutes uh, or more time than 60 minutes a day. Again, you know, it comes down to how much time you're able to devote to playing, practicing. Um, how you practice is going to make a big difference in how fast you progress. Because it is true, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. Because you can be practicing something, you know, for 50,000 hours, but if you're doing it wrong the entire time, it's not going to do any good. Uh, it's not going to do you any good. So, let's take uh, one last figure. So let's say, on average, you're putting in two hours a day. So, you're going to wind up with about 730 hours of playtime practice for the year, which is going to take you 14 years to hit that 10,000 hour mark to be at expert level, whatever that means. So, as you can see, you know, the, the more time you put into practice, the less time, year-wise, it will take in order to hit this supposed expert level. So, if you, anyone watching this video, anyone watching this video wants to be one of the top players out there, whether it's uh, your, you know, speed, technicality, even writing your own music and being able to connect with people, even that stuff requires practice. Lots of practice. Tons of practice. Probably way more practice than you think is necessary. I'll tell you... When I, in even in my early years, I was putting in a lot of practice, like I mentioned, you know, sometimes it was several hours a day. But man, my ego was through the roof. I, I thought I was just the absolute, you know, I was the shit at what I was doing. I, you know, I was just amazing and all this stuff. You know, I mean, people would compliment me and all this stuff, and it went to my head. Uh, of course, I look back now on it, on all that now. It's just like I was nowhere near as good as I thought I was. I mean, I no, yeah, whatever, <laughs> wasn't as good as I thought I was. That's all that matters. And you know, I hadn't put in enough practice to to truly be as proficient of a guitar player as I thought I was. And one very humbling experience for me is when I started to record with someone else who is very very good at rhythm and timing and it turned out that my timing was absolutely god awful terrible terrible timing 
I've since gotten a lot better at it, especially teaching people how to count rhythm, tap your foot, and all that stuff. I mean, I put in a lot of time throughout the week just doing those things, just metronome work, practicing with students and whatnot, showing them how to count and all those things. So teaching has absolutely been a, a great benefit to my improvement as a player as also with understanding how these things work. So, you know, that's something to consider. You know, if you, if you feel that you know enough to start teaching people, you can start teaching as well. That will absolutely take your playing to a whole new level because you have to really examine everything that you do and really think about what's happening. So I know this is a bit of a lengthy video, but I, I hope that this gives better perspective for you. So again, compare yourself to you. Compare yourself to you, not the top players of the world because they may have a genetic ability or genetic advantage that you don't have. Uh, they've probably put in way more hours on the instrument than you have. If you are an adult and you have a family to take care of, you've got a full-time job, maybe you're going to school and working, you know. I mean, once you're out of school and it's time to be an adult, the amount of time you have to practice diminishes a lot. And the amount of energy you have also diminishes because you're you know, just the amount of energy it takes to go through your day-to-day -day process and then try and make yourself practice an hour a day can sometimes be very, very challenging. So I understand that. At the same time, you know, your excuses of, well, I have work and I have a full-time job with family and all this stuff, it doesn't matter. Sorry, it doesn't matter. You can make any excuse you want, but if you want to be as good as you say you want to be, you got to put in the hours. So there is no excuse in the world that's going to change that. So if, uh, if you like what I had to say in this video, I'd greatly appreciate the thumbs up. I'd also love to hear your opinions on this and kind of what your experience has been in improving your playing and like how much time you have devoted to the instrument. So, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thank you for watching.